Section 7.3 and 7.4, the number e and logarithmic functions. Wait, e is a number? I always thought it was a letter. Hmm. Well, the natural base e is called the Euler number, and it can be estimated or approximated by 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And if you plug increasingly larger values in for n, you'll see that you will approach this decimal. Um, 2.71828 and it appears for the first few decimal places that it does repeat itself but then it becomes a non-terminating non-repeating decimal. So just like pi, e is an irrational number. And also just like pi, there's an e button on your calculator. You should take a minute to try to locate that button. So these first examples we're going to simplify without a calculator and then we're going to evaluate them using our calculator. So just like if we had a number or a variable, we're going to add our exponents if we have e to the fourth times e to the third and get e to the seventh. Popping that into your calculator, you'll get 1096.6332. And until further notice, I would like you to round everything to four decimal places. This next example, 60 e to the eighth over 12 e to the fifth, well, 60 divided by 12 is 5, and then we're going to subtract our exponents and get 5e e to the third. Then we can put this in our calculator and get 100.4277. This third example, there's really not any simplifying we can do, so we're going to head straight to our calculator. And we should get 4.2340. You should try all of these examples so you make sure that you know how to use your calculator and you know where this button is. In this word problem, E is used quite often in many applications, and so the biggest thing that you need to get used to about E is to realize that it is not a variable. You're not going to be putting in a number for E. It is estimated or approximated by that decimal. So for this first example, annual sales of a certain product can be modeled by this function, where S is the number of units sold, and T is the number of years since the product went on the market. Estimate the annual sales six years after the product went on the market. It's a matter of being able to use this formula. So S equals 60,000 times E to the negative 0.15 T, and we're going to plug in 6 for the T. Simplifying our exponent, negative 0.15 times 6 is negative 0.9. Plugging this into your calculator, you're going to get 24,394.18. We don't really know what these units are, but I'm going to presume that you can't sell a partial unit. So we need to, again, make sure that you're rounding correctly. And so the final answer would be 24,394 units. The other thing that E is used for is when interest is compounded continuously. So in the previous section, we were told that the interest might be compounded monthly or daily. And so you could ask yourself, how many of those are there in one year? When a problem tells you that the com interest is compounded continuously, if you ask yourself, how many of those are there in a year? Well, how many continuous is there in a year? And there isn't, and so that's why we use this formula. And this formula is commonly called the PERT formula. And hopefully you can see on the right-hand side of the equation, the PE to the RT spells PERT. Again, E stands for the final amount in the account. P stands for the initial or starting amount in the account. R is the interest rate, again as a decimal, and T is the time in years. Again, make sure that you realize you're only going to use this formula if the equation or the problem says that the interest is compounded continuously. So for this first example, you deposited $3,000 in an account that pays 3.5% annual interest, compounded continuously. What is the balance after three years? So again, we're going to, because it says continuously, we're going to use this PERT formula. So we want to find out what is the balance after three years. So we need to find out what our A is. Our P, what we started with, is $3,000. E, remember, is just a number, so you're not plugging a number in for E. R. 3.5% written as a decimal would be 0 .035, and then our t, of course, is 3 years. If we simplify this, 0 .035 times 3 is 0 .105. Plugging this into your calculator, 
And again, we're dealing with money, so you need to make sure that you're rounding correctly to dollars and cents. So it would be $3,332.13. And so now we move on to logarithms. The definition of a logarithm with base b. If b and y are positive numbers, and again, b can't equal 1, because if you raise 1 to a power, then you're just going to get 1, the logarithm of y with base b is denoted and defined by, and this is read as the log base b of y, or the log of y with base b, equals x. And the way I always remember this is I call it the loopy thing. So this b here is our base number. And so you're going to start, it's called a base b there as well. So if you start with a b and you loop around, you're going to have b to the x equals y. And that's kind of my little trick to help you remember how to change from logarithmic form into exponential form. So this first example logarithm of 1. Log base b of 1 equals 0 because if we do the loopy thing we get b to the 0 equals 1 and that is indeed true. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. If we do the loopy thing on the second one, logarithm of b with base b, again b to the first equals b and again that makes sense. It's true. So let's change some of these, write these logarithmic equations into exponential form. So we're going to do the loopy thing. And we're going to get 3 to the second equals 9. And is that true? Yes, it is. 3 squared is 9. Let's do it to this one. 8 to the 0 equals 1. Is that true? Yes, that's true too. And let's do it on this third one. 5 to the negative 2 equals 125. And if, as you can see, 5 to the negative 2 means we put the 5 squared on the denominator. When we square that, we do get 125th. Let's try it a few more times, and we're going to evaluate these this time. Now, we don't know what log base 4 of 64 is. So since we don't know, like everything in algebra, we're going to let it equal x. If we do the loopy thing, then we can rewrite this as 4 to the x equals 64. Now how does that help us? Well, let's rewrite 64 with a base of 4. So 4 to the x equals 64 is 4 to the third. Well, doesn't 4 to the third have to equal 4 to the third? So therefore, x equals 3. Let's try it again, doing the loopy thing. We're going to let this equal x, and we're going to take 2 to the x equals 125, 0.125, I'm sorry. Well, we don't necessarily know what 0.125 is. If you put that in your calculator, or if you change that into a fraction, you'll see that 2 to the x equals 1 8. Again, let's change this 8 into a base of 2. We can rewrite that as 2 to the x equals 2, 1 over 2 to the third. Well, we can't say that x equals 3 because this is on the numerator and this is on the denominator. How can we bring that up to the numerator? We can rewrite that as 2 to the negative third. And again, 2 to the negative third has to equal 2 to the negative third, so x has to equal negative 3. Let's try it again. Let this equal x. Do the loopy thing and rewrite it. 1 fourth to the x equals 256. We can rewrite this, 4 to the 1 fourth to the x, as 4 to the negative x, bringing the 4 to the numerator, the x becomes a negative exponent. And we can rewrite 256 as 2 to the fourth. You can always refer back to your perfects lists to be able to do this. And again, 4 to the fourth has to equal 4 to the fourth, so negative x has to equal 4. Solving for x and dividing by negative 1, we get x equals negative 4. couple more. If we write this equals x, do the loopy thing, we get 2 to the x equals 32. We can rewrite 32 as 2 to the fifth, so therefore x has to equal 5. 
This one gets a little bit trickier. Doing the loopy thing, we get 4 to the x equals 8, but there's nothing that we can raise 4 to to get 8. 4 to the first is 4, 4 to the second is 16. But if you think about this, we could rewrite 4 and 8, both with a base of 2. 4 is 2 squared, but we still have that to the x, and 8 is 2 to the third. Remember, you multiply exponents, so we actually have 2 to the 2x equals 2 to the third, and again, the exponents now have to be equal. Solving for x, we get x equals 3 halves. Common logarithm. A common logarithm is a logarithm with base 10. We live in a base 10 world. So if we're dealing with log base 10, we often will write that as log of x. And the button on your calculator is a base 10 logarithm button. So all of those previous problems that we just used, we can't use our calculator for them. The natural logarithm is a logarithm with base e, and the way we denote that, if we will write it as log base e, but this is the natural logarithm, and again, there's a button on your calculator for it. So now let's take a look at a few of these examples. First of all, we can do these the way we were just doing with the loopy thing. If we set this equal to x, realize that log of 1 actually means log base 10, do the loopy thing, we get 10 to the x equals 1. Well, 10 to what power is going to give you 1? That's going to be 0. Again, set it equal to x. Make sure you realize that it's base 10. Do the loopy thing, and you get 10 to the x equals 100. 10 squared equals 100, so x is 2. We can continue to do this. We get x equals 3. Or you can put this in your calculator. If you were to put in your calculator log of 10,000, it's going to give you 4. A few more with your calculator. This 10 to what power would give you 17? There's really no way to figure that out. So it's a matter of putting these in your calculator. So please again go ahead and try using your calculator for these and make sure you get these same answers. It's pretty easy calculator work. If you have any questions on this section, please make sure you're asking when you come to class tomorrow. Don't turn this off yet. Um, we're going to be using logarithms and dealing with some properties of logarithms, so if there's anything in this basic logarithm stuff that you don't understand, make sure you're ask asking questions. I would like you to try one more problem. See if you can figure out what log base 9 of 27 is. And we'll see you in class tomorrow.